Playing around with some gadgets before the onslaught, which is MWC, this odd little device landed on my desk. It appears to be some form of mobile communication device, but it has buttons instead of a touchscreen, and the main display is hidden under this hinged flap. There aren't many apps, no way to add more that we can find, and the main usage seems to be focused on talking. Now, all joking aside, this is a newer phone released by AT&T as a Go phone, which begs the question, in this age of mobile data and services, could you go back to using a dumb phone? There's a fun nostalgia over firing up a device like this, that I can remember exactly how excited I was to own an early 3G Nokia phone with Bluetooth and a camera. None of those things are particularly exciting today, though. The construction is solid, grippy, textured plastic on the front and back, easy to hold and easy to flip open. So much of this really does feel like it was ripped out of the past. Very few areas that seem like they might have been upgraded for the current year. The interface depends on these selection buttons, navigating through menus with this D-pad, hang up will always take you back to the main home screen, and shortcuts take you to texts and the camera. Yes, this does have a camera on the back, it's not very good, but I am giddily excited to see that photos come out landscape when pointing the phone vertically. I wish smartphones would force videos the same way, like how old flip cameras used to operate. Another blast from the past is the Micro SIM. Happily, AT&T sent along a SIM because I couldn't find my Nano to Micro adapter. There is a micro SD card slot to expand storage. Take that, Pixel and iPhone. No issues packing 32 GBs for photos and media. It's a 3G phone, so there is a web browser, but you won't want to use it. Text entry takes us back to the old T9 days. And loading web pages is sort of a mess of slow download and formatting issues. That runs double for texting. Going back to T9 makes me miss slider keyboard something fierce. If you're watching videos on this channel, obviously this phone probably isn't for you unless you really have some issues with larger phones and skinny jeans. The chances are pretty good that the phone of your smartphone is really one of the least used apps on your smartphone. There are some folks out there, however, who might benefit from this device. Recently, we tried to find a good replacement phone for my grandfather, who just never really got into using a smartphone. He still needs a good communication device, and the focus on calls here would be right up his alley. Add to that, it was nice carrying around a phone which got multiple days of battery life. AT&T estimates around 360 hours of talk time and up to 22 days of standby time. I couldn't make a dent in that while testing this phone out, so I'm inclined to believe their estimates. So let's wrap this up. Where's that leave us with the singular flip? To answer the question asked by this video's title, no. No, I cannot go back to a dumb phone. I lasted exactly one day before the flip was relegated to a companion device tied to my Google Voice account. But I don't think it's a terrible idea for carriers to have some legacy options like these for people who want something super simple. Just covering the basics of making calls, listening to some music, and painfully punching out a short text here and there. It's really not a terrible idea in this day and age that a flip phone still exists. And that's about as much as I feel we really need to talk about this phone. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for our normal coverage on smartphones, tablets, and wearables, and help us out with some sharing on your favorite social networks. For Pocket Now, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, some gadget guy on Twitter and Instagram, and I will catch you all on the next review.